up YouTube just out here working on the Fords today uh, both my trucks decided to have an issue at the same time I don't want to say they both broke down at the same time and you know before you go with the Ford jokes just remember that both these trucks have almost 300,000 miles on them so easy guys easy uh, anyhow uh, this truck started squeaking not long after I decided that I wanted to pressure wash the engine and the reason I did that is because it was just so filthy inside of here I couldn't see anything and I knew there was some leaks and stuff going on so um, washed it and then shortly after I had some bearings and things start squeaking so um, I suspect it was either the idle, idler pulley or the tent belt tensioner and so I've, I've gone ahead and removed the um, idler pulley which is right here this is the idler pulley and it does look like it's kind of got some grease in there like it's been leaking a little bit. um so it could have been that and then the other thing that it could have been was um well it could be any of these pulleys in here any of these that have a bearing on them but you'll see down in there there's two pulleys that are on the belt tensioner and that's all one piece it kind of rotates and uh tensions the belt as the belt tensioner name would imply so um got some parts ordered um i'll talk about that one in a second but that one had some issues Just got the parts today for that um here is what i got ordered for the white truck which is a 2000 uh f-250 turbo diesel uh, these are for a different project we'll talk about those later but here's the new idler um, i was just showing you the one that i took off uh, if you'd like the part number it's there um, at the top so that's the ford motorcraft uh, pulley idler pulley and it does come with a new hardware a new uh, bolt right there and the new plastic piece on the bolt uh, we have a new belt um, i did pull the old belt off i'm hoping this is the right one jk 81 and there's this whole deal with uh, these trucks about whether or not it has the cold package. That's what they ask you when you go into um, one of these parts stores like AutoZone or O'Reilly or one of those places. So they ask you, do you have the cold package on your truck? And I know my truck has a block heater, but I don't know about this cold package thing. I think that's actually, it might include a fuel bowl heater. So anyways, that all, I don't know what that has to do with the, the length of the belt or which belt to run. But this is the belt I got, the JK81227. It's the same one I put on that truck after I converted it over to the Super Duty belt tensioner. But I have the old one here. And it is a 8K1223. So... Don't know if that's the right belt or not. 8K, 8K, 12, 23. So if this isn't the right one, I might end up taking it back. Um, I'm not sure if that other belt is an aftermarket belt. Maybe that's why the number is different. But I'm going to look up that other number now and see if maybe it's just an aftermarket part. This is the one that they said to use. This is the one I used on my other truck. So this is the one I'll probably try and use, at least give it a shot. So there's the belt, um, there's the idler pulley I showed you guys. And then inside here, this is the new belt tensioner. So, um, get my trusty knife out here. see it comes complete with a new uh, new bolt and two new pulleys so there's the new one this is the Ford Motocraft one it says dually on it um, it's the one that I used on my green truck again when I went and upgraded it from the old-school body style the OBS style tensioner which is a single pulley to this which is a better design in, in my opinion got the bolt loosened up just wanted to show you guys the tool i used it's just a 
ratchet here with a 13 millimeter, a little bit extra long 13 millimeter. If you had a long socket 13 millimeter, it would probably work, but I didn't have a 13 millimeter long socket, so we used this. It's a <laughs> it's a standard extension to a large extension with a large 13 millimeter. I mean, it worked, but a long socket 13 probably would have worked better. And then I just have a breaker bar, uh, my medium size blue breaker bar on there, and uh, just took that whole um, thing just like that and stuck it down in there. I didn't have to take the radiator uh, degasser bottle off or anything like that. I just stuck it down in there. It's pretty easy actually once you take that upper roller off and you know you probably be replacing that upper roller anyhow if you're hearing something squeak down in there um, like I've been. So if you suspect that you've got a squeaky uh, bearing might as well do all three of those at the same time. I'm doing the belt tensioner that has the two pulleys that I showed you earlier and then the, the idler pulley there. And if that doesn't work, then I'm gonna have to start looking. Uh, it could be the air conditioner compressor here could have been making that squeaky sound. I don't think it was, but it could have been. It sounded like it was lower down. It also could be the water pump, which is on the right there um, in the view behind my pointer finger there. Um, that's the water pump that I just did on the other truck. And uh, I really hope that's not it, because that's gonna be more expensive than what I already just paid for the belt tension, which was like about 70 bucks plus the belt. You know, I came to over $100 for the belt and the tensioner and the idler pulley, so we will see. All right, guys, so here's a look at the new tensioner and idler pulley and the old tensioner and idler pulley. So this should be pretty easy because it looks like this is definitely the original idler pulley and it has dually written on it and forward underneath all that grease there as you can see and uh, it looks like this has been here for a while because it looks like this hole is pretty wallowed out from you know them taking it on and off so I would say that's been on there for a while uh, hopefully that's the reason why it was squeaking and I won't have to uh, pay any more money to replace anything else um, here's the new idler pulley right here that I mentioned earlier comes with a new bolt as well. Um, so new tensioner, new idler pulley. Um, here's the old tensioner and the old idler pulley we just talked about. And then here's the belts. I went ahead and just hung them up. Um, you can see that the new belt is a little bit higher up at the top, but when I pull them down, um, it's, it's almost perfect. I mean, you can see they're really, really close. If it wasn't hanging higher up, I think the new one, and if it was stretched out a little bit more, um, I think the length would be just about perfect. So, um, there we go. That's my new belt. Um, and the new belt compared to the old belt. And uh, here's again, here's a look at the uh, number. The number, actually it wasn't that number there or that one there either. It was actually this one right here. It's JK1227. That's the belt. Alright guys, so now I just got to put everything back on. Um, you can see right here, this is the 13 millimeter. Uh, socket that I used to take it off both the idler pulley and the tensioner uh, with a little uh, half extension there and then a couple of breaker bars and my uh, my blue breaker bar to assist. I just had a little bit of a uh, carbon choke cleaner out here because there was a lot of grease stuck on there and I was cleaning it out while I had the pulleys and stuff out. Be nice to see what's going on down there. Clean it up a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and toss these on there. I don't really have a tripod out today, guys, so I'm just gonna go ahead and toss it all on and we'll show you guys when I'm done. Uh, maybe just show you a little tip about how I rerouted the uh, new belt once it's on there. Uh, first, I'm gonna install this and then I'll install this just because this is below that and it makes it easier to get to it. All right, guys, I got the new belt tensioner in there and uh, this old life preserver actually worked <laughs> pretty well. Put that up there and uh, lay it on my stomach and just kind of reached over uh, with my left hand and uh, you know you, f you feed the tensioner in from the right and then you kind of hold it with your left hand and get the nut started and uh, and then you just kind of grab it and I without the extension on the socket just with my my hand I put the socket on there and kind of loosely tightened it on there uh, just enough to kind of hold it in place so you guys can see that very well or not but the tensioner is in there now so there's the tensioner and then I've got I haven't tightened it yet but the 
upper pulley is there. You can see it's still got some slack. I need to tighten it down. So I got those in there. And uh, yeah, it wasn't. It was a little trickier to get back in than it was, uh, you know, to get out, obviously. Um, but if I had some advice, I would say just don't worry about the nut. Just get it in there with the two little uh, nubs here sticking out. Get those. Just worry about getting those lined up first. Get them lined up just right and get those in there. And then once you get those in there, hold those in there with one hand and uh, with your other hand grab your socket and loosely tighten that other one and the square part goes up it's like that so um, see it's in there now and I went ahead and I have tightened down the tensioner and I just need to tighten down this now and then uh, once I get the pulley tightened then I just need to route the belt and uh, have a picture of the belt on this one but that's okay I've got the diagram and uh, I'll show you guys a picture of the belt routing diagram on the screen now so you have it if you don't have one um, because I'll go get one off the internet if I can't figure it out but it's not too complicated the main thing the most important thing that that you have to remember in doing this is to do everything else and then this right here is the last little part you want to do so you get all of it done and then that part right there is the last one you push down because uh, it's the easiest to get to and that's the last part so you route all the rest of the belt first and then you get this upper uh, pulley here to where it's almost on and then you, you let your your slack out and then you uh, put that last little pulley loop on there so uh, that's what we're gonna do all right so i got all the belts tightened i got all the belts all right so i got all the pulleys tightened i got the new tensioner on down there you can see that tensioner down there Got my lovely assistant to hold the camera for me since there's really no way to even get a tripod and show down in there. But I'm going to take the, the new belt here and the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to loop that bottom one down there because that's always the hardest one to get on. So I'm going to take it like this with the ribs on the inside. I'm just going to feed it down in the slot to the left of the fan there. Down there like that. All right, so I'm just gonna take this loop right here. See the loop? I'm just gonna take the loop like that, shove it down there and try and get that bottom one down there. The big bottom one. So after I get that bottom one looped on there like that, now we're ready to go up to the top one. Oh, the water pump one in the middle there. And then we can go over from the water pump over to the power steering hydro booster over here. So we got that in there now. From the water pump to the hydro booster power steering pump. And then now we've got to take this one off. Yeah, I have to take this one off because this is the type of hose where I have to do that. And now if you've updated your hose, you might have the kind where it goes over and around through this. I don't have that kind, so I have to pull my hose off, pop this around, and it'll go over that. It's a good time to check and see if this is squeaky before I put it back on here. It does have a little squeak going on. If you guys can hear between the dog barking the jet flying over my head or the neighbor with the weed whacker but um, there is a little chirp there when I go like this so it may have been as simple as just replacing my alternator the whole time instead of doing all that but you know if we're gonna be using this to tow toys and whatnot it's good to have I mean all that they need to be replaced eventually and obviously those weren't new ones you know those have been in there for a while so anyhow, I'm going to take this off really fast, pull that belt through, finish putting the belt on, and then maybe run to the parts store for an alternator. And we go through. There we go. So that's that part. Alright, so now we went from the bottom loop down there. We'll just make sure that's still kind of relatively on. 
and then we got the middle one on the water pump and then we went over to the power steering and now we're up to the alternator and then we're gonna go this is the part I think I was telling you guys about before we're gonna go underneath this eventually but we don't want to do that yet that's the last thing we're gonna do is this idler here so first we're gonna go over here we're gonna go around and this is the compressor for the air conditioner and we'll just go ahead and thread it through the belt tensioner. I don't know if you guys can see or not. But it's going to go around the round side and then over the top of the... Now it's ready to go. I've got it all routed and everything. And all it is is I just need to push this last belt over this last idler pulley, the new pulley we put on. So I'm going to put my giant half inch breaker bar, the one with the long handle that I actually light you up. snapped in there. It's got to pull this towards me and then I can push this belt down. It should go right on. and tight. Everything looks nice and straight. It's good. Just come over here on the side. You want to look at it like this from right here. You want to look at it right here and just make sure all those are nice and level and flat. Starting with that one, that one, that one. Just go up and just line them up really straight. Make sure they're both level and that they're all in a straight line. All look pretty good to me. I mean, they're not perfectly straight, but I think it'll straighten out more once you once we run the, the engine a little bit. The belt will kind of break in a little bit. But um, yeah, it looks like it's good. I hope the squeak is gone. Otherwise, we need to go buy an alternator. I have a feeling it was the alternator. I hope if it was anything, I would hope it would be the alternator because it's literally one, two, three, four four bolts and a clip if we did have to do the alternator. I would way rather have it be the alternator than the air conditioner compressor. So, wash my hands and then I'll start it up.